Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's entry in our Overwatch show. Let's break it down. I am your host, Nathan Grayson, and I'm joined today, as always, by Cecilia D'Anastasio and Heather Alexandra. Hello. Hi, Nathan. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Awesome. We are here to talk about Overwatch. Allegedly. Allegedly here to talk about Overwatch. What's Overwatch? I don't know. It's something uh, that some website called Kotaku is like just built everything around. It's like a stage in For Honor. Yeah, the yeah, Kotaku. Yeah, it's yeah, also the uh, anti-cheat system in Counter-Strike. Yes. Oh. And it's the spirit of friendship inside of us all. Yes. The, <laughs> the, the real Overwatch is what we found on the, along the way. Exactly. But yeah, so today we are talking about a couple new things in Overwatch, or rather things that will soon be in Overwatch but are currently on the PTR. Those being big changes to Bastion, who I think for a little while fell out of favor because people kind of figured out how to counter him and then they just started tearing him to shreds. And also custom games, which are magical. But first, let's go ahead and talk about Bastion because I think he's provoking strong reactions. I personally do not love him. I never loved him. Um, you, can, you can't prove it. You never loved him. You... What if he's listening right now, Nathan? Have some heart. Yeah, how, does he, how do you think he would feel, Nathan Grayson? I don't know. I think he's a robot. I don't think he has feelings. Oh. Well, then why does he have a gender? That's true. It. It, Nathan. Oh, yeah. That's Bastion changes, though. I, I like them. I like them a lot, Nathan. I think that the added mobility is very nice. Being able to heal while moving is an absolute game changer for that character. Um, there's also just general boosts to when you're in recon mode, so you don't have to turret down as much. When you are in turret, you have a little bit more defense, but you don't have as much focused offense. I think that Bastion can play it forward now. I think that Bastion can rush ahead and maybe deal with a Pharah who's flying in the air, and then if a Reinhardt is getting close, hunker down in a deterrent for him and shoot that, and then if they get hurt, run away, but also heal themselves. I think Bastion has a lot more versatility now, which was definitely needed because before that, Bastion just had become, kind of like you were suggesting, almost useless. There were just so many easy ways to counter Bastion, and now giving Bastion more things to do and more modes to operate makes that character actually useful. Yeah, for sure. Cecilia, what do you think? I too hate Bastion. I do, I do so much. Um, but I played a little bit of Bastion on the PTR today, and I think that it was just more fun. Like, sh sure, we can talk about effectiveness, and Heather, I think you're definitely right um, that he's more effective. But I just, I get so bored just sitting there in one place and waiting for people to show up and then just nailing him like the, oh that's so boring you know it's more fun now yeah and it's infuriating for the person on the other side of it i just i feel like bastion is the least mechanically interesting character in overwatch and these changes make him a little bit or it a little bit more interesting but not so much so that i'm like oh yes i'm really excited that bastion is in this game like maybe slightly controversial statement but I kind of wish they'd just get rid of Bastion. What? Oh boy. Okay. So, so, so wait. So, so let's approach this from from a different angle then. And this isn't meant as like a challenge, but I am curious then. So Bastion wasn't really all that engrossing or exciting to play as, and so they give him these changes. Bastion's more a little bit more mobile now, but you you're not really sold on it. What were the things? What are the things that you think they should be doing differently? What are the things that you think they maybe could have done that they they have yet to do i'd be curious to know where you see i mean even though you just said you could probably just kick bastion to the curb let's assume we have to have the good old ro robot around what what would you want to do with it nathan well, i mean bastion I, to be Farah. yeah i mean that's the main thing i think we should give bastion a jetpack and uh <laughs> switch to having bastion use rockets and also maybe turn bastion from like a robot into and work with me here like a a woman from egypt <laughs> I I think it could really work. But no, um I mean my my bigger issue is just that like there so many of the mechanics in Overwatch are rewarding for both like the player and kind of even the victim of whoever, you know, got the elimination or whatever. 
in so far as there's something to learn from it and it's like oh that was interesting that was an interesting strategic moment with bastion it's like i walked into the wrong spot and immediately got killed yeah and it's just like yeah you, that's a great analysis yeah it sucks like you, like you get hooked and you're like ah oh, yeah i got hooked oh man i'm gonna fuck up that roadhog later but you get nailed by a bastion and you're like guys there's a bastion over there could you just could you swat it with the fly swatter then they take out the bastion size fly swatter and they get him. Sucks. It's boring. Mm hmm. Yeah. If you have to compare a character to, a, like, if their peskiness level is that of a fly, there, there may be some problems. So, wh with what you're saying, I, I understand the point that you're getting at. I think if I'm trying to look at the negatives for what they've done with Bastion right now, I think the actual biggest negative is that he doesn't feel like a defense character anymore. Right, So all the characters are categorized such and such. But the way that Bastion has been changed, Bastion essentially, because you're spending so much time in recon mode, Bastion ends up feeling like a lighter, a little bit more versatile version of Soldier 76. Hmm. Right, You don't pop down your own like nano shield where you can get the healing. Instead, you sort of have your own self-heal, which means that you're sort of... Usefulness to your team is not as broad, I think, in terms of what your options are, but when it comes to just shooting and running around in recon mode, I think you feel a lot like Soldier 76, which is cool because Bastion in that mode beforehand just wasn't very interesting, but at the same time, I think it's a little bit of a bummer because there's not too much mechanical differentiation between the two characters. It seems like the Overwatch team is trying to make all of their characters less situational. It seems like that's like kind of a general goal. Like for me personally, I don't mind situational characters, but if they're worried about characters getting like switched out when, you know, for example, you're on a map that's like initially control point and then turns into payload, like, and then you just don't want to play Bastion anymore. For some reason, I guess they want you to pick Bastion for that whole map, even though kind of overall the best strategy is to be switching heroes throughout the game. I'm saying that mostly because of the recent Symmetra changes too, in which they made her a lot less situational on a defense map and also made her someone who's not going to die and can actually get a ton of kills when she has to go offense. Yeah, although to be fair, I, I think what they're trying to do there is less render everybody completely not situational and more take away from heroes who are perhaps overly so to the point where it's like okay you play this hero in this one very specific scenario and then like never use them otherwise it's just like a joke if you do and i i think that's good i i'm not sure if they're going so far as to be like okay you should be able to just stick with one hero all the time i don't think they want that so what about support torb wait what support torb so oh don't tell me you haven't encountered this support torb you're nathan Okay, okay. Br uh, on on our show, let's break it down. Would you break it down for me? Go for it, Cecilia. Right, okay. So lately, sometimes I've been playing on offense. Only quick play, only quick play. Uh, we're on attack, and people will choose Torbjorn. This actually happened in competitive recently. Someone did that, but it's not acceptable in competitive. It is in quick play. So why would you do that? Support is like straight... Uh, Torbjorn is straight defense, like... He has absolutely no merit on attack, but but he drops all of those health packs everywhere and they're pretty substantial. And so we've actually won games having a Torbjorn and then like a Zenyatta or a Torbjorn and then like an Ana um, just because of the, the boost, just because of the health boost. Don't get me wrong, it's blasphemous, <laughs> but it works. There you go. That's our, th this is our new segment, uh, Strategy of the Week. And there you go. That's, <laughs> that's what you got to well, do now. Play Torbjorn as a support. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a strategy as much as a, a thing you can do and I won't get mad at you for doing it anymore. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take it will. further and call it the new meta. <laughs> Well, it's, it's funny that you say that term because what I was going to say is we're talking about all these character changes and the one thing that it does absolutely have a demonstrable effect on is the metagame. So Symmetra comes in, Symmetra can toss up 
that shield generator, suddenly Symmetra becomes far more viable and interesting for defending points. Like Cecilia said, you can combine that with other characters. So yeah, you can have Torbjorn and Symmetra together, and all of a sudden you can turn somebody as squishy as Tracer into a really strong character, and that affects the way that you play. With Bastion being so mobile and having all these different options, the counters for Bastion change, right? Yeah. He's a little more durable in turret form, so Farah's not as great of a counter, but because you're using your left click so much, or, or excuse me, your right click to heal so much, all of a sudden, of all people, like Sombra becomes the character that can do a lot to Bastion. Oh. Um, the more that these changes occur, one of the nice things about it, at the very least, is that we get to see characters that we wouldn't expect to have as much viability gain viability because they are gaining um, effectiveness or have ways to counter these newer boosted characters. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, if nothing else, I am interested to see what people decide to do with Bastion. I'm not like totally writing him off and or writing it off. I'm going to get this right eventually. Um, Wait, we're, we're, but we can call I was the, just giving you shit, Nathan. You like, can call the robot no whatever you want to call the robot. I, I feel like there's a contingent of Bastion fans that every time I mess it up, they just like shudder like BMO they're like we will find time. him people get very angry about that <laughs> but anyway i think we should now move on to our next subject which is my personal favorite part of this upcoming update uh the custom games they're they're Woo! ridiculous they're real good um well some of them are really good others are terrible tell us about the bad ones I know you want to talk about how good they are, but I just want to undermine you if that's cool. Yeah, no, totally. I, I did get into some really bad ones. Um, I mean, in some cases, it was just because people hadn't really fine-tuned them. Like, there was a boss fight when I did. It was called Boss Fight. And the idea is that it was, like, a whole team versus one super buffed-up character. And We just did a Fera boss fight. Oh, nice. Wait, who won? The the team won, right? No. Really? No. Somebody no, finally the tuned it so the boss wins. Neato. Yeah, the boss one. It was very nice. Well, what happened to you? Oh, in mine, it was just a massacre. Like, the boss just got obliterated repeatedly. And it sort of became this, like, game of chase. The boss would realize that they were losing in, like, a minute, and they just flee. And so, I mean, that was kind of fun. I don't think that's what they were going for, but it was fun. So if that's a bad one, then what's a good one? Because for me, my favorite is when people do predator matches, which is, like, super awesome, fast deadly sombra versus like a team of 76s or something i think that's so good that that honestly should be a brawl um is there a mode that you really enjoy okay so the the one i really enjoyed is going to sound completely ludicrous but i swear it's great so the this mode was 6v6 all roadhogs and all of the roadhogs had 3000 hp and they all could pretty much ult immediately. Like if you hit somebody once or you healed, you'd immediately get your ult. Ah, uh, word. And so the idea here, at first I thought it was just going to be like zaniness, but it works really well on point capture modes or on point capture levels because you're basically just using the ult's ability to knock things back, to knock everyone off. And so it just becomes about keeping the other team off. And it's especially fun if the point is near a space that you can fall into and die. Because then it's about pushing people off strategically while they're also trying to push you off. And so it's like Roadhog Sumo. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I got to check that out. So how do you get a sense for how like permanent some of these custom matches are? Like, Do you think it's something? Because someone has to moderate it, right? So how long do you think it's going to stay around? I, I think it'll be interesting to see like the way that these catch on and become things that people pass around to each other because like in in other pc first person shooters you know people would run servers and they didn't have to be online for them to continue to persist um whereas someone's got to be hosting it in overwatch right now they can't like have a dedicated server and so i think what will instead happen is people will see a mode that they like think oh that's cool and sort of iterate on it and then kind of become somebody who feels it's their responsibility to have that mode running at certain times of the day. I love it. I love this future. I guess. It sounds like, if that's the future, though, it sounds like Blizzard is offloading a lot of their work to the community again, right? Because I think 
in I, in an ideal world, you have like solid server browsers and servers that you can rent. I, I hope that's the next step because if custom game modes take off as much as I think that they probably will, having to sort of rely on like the vicissitudes of fate and the real world to make sure that you can play like Instahook Roadhog matches or whatever seems a little off to me and seems like it demands a lot from certain members of the community. And I don't know if I like that. I, I think that definitely they need to look into having servers that can actually run whenever and stuff. Otherwise, people will quickly get tired of trying to find the type of game they want to play and not being able to do it. But yeah, wait, Cecilia, have you played any custom games? Yeah, so I played that Farrah boss match. That was fun. Um, oh, sorry, I meant not fun. It wasn't fun. Uh, <laughs> no, because because you got we got like our boss like our butts kicked by the boss. Yeah, and I was just like, nope, logged <laughs> off. But the one that I did play very momentarily that was kind of fun was Roadhog Insta Hooks and Reinhardt Charges. Um, with no cooldown and at like oh my god 20 times speed how yeah. fast is it it was like a near max movement speed yeah, Reinhardt yeah. so the idea is that there's all these fast moving charging Reinhardts around but the Roadhogs can still snag them with their hooks because their hooks are instant yeah which is I think a really great idea <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun I think though that I've been getting so into comp lately that it's going to be difficult to kind of code switch, you know? Because you view the game very seriously when you're playing a lot of comp. You you think of it in a very orthodox fashion, and you get angry when, when there are deviations. And then when you see the same ingredients, you see the same heroes, you see the same maps um, in this much more sort of whimsical mode, because to be real, like, we take arcade pretty seriously when we even play that. I, I think that it will definitely change how I approach the game. And it will be difficult for me to kind of like lower, for, for me to have fun with it in that in that way and get something else out of it like that. Do you know what I'm saying, or do I do, do I sound a little crazy? No, right I th- I think it makes sense. I think I think the way to look at it then, if that's the approach, and and you're somebody who's really into playing, you know, getting through whatever is left of season three and really raising your score, which I think a lot of people are focused on right now. I think you can, you know, if you go for a stretch of games and you lose a little bit, like that can be really frustrating. And I think maybe custom games could actually be a really nice palate cleanser. Mm. So you, yeah, so you have that chance. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. I actually ended up doing that and I uh, ended up in, on, in a custom game that was a skirmish match, except for that everything was cranked way up and characters were basically invincible. And so at first I was just like, it, it was on Oasis. And so I was just jetting around as D.Va and there was no cooldown on her booster, so I could just fly. And I was like flying around everywhere and not really paying attention to what was going on around me. And eventually I was like, okay, I'm kind of getting tired of doing this. And I decided to land near where a bunch of other characters were hanging out. And I didn't really know what they were up to. I could just see them off in the distance. And I landed next to them after the like chaos of flying around with these boosters being super loud. And it was a circle made up entirely of zenyatas. And they were all doing their like sit emote meditating. And everybody kept using their voice lines to be like, peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> it was just what like the most amazing contrast ever. It's interesting, though, because I think custom matches will let people train a little bit better, too. So one thing, maybe I've mentioned this before, I don't know. Uh, A lot of what I will do before I really want to play seriously, I will open up a match. I forget where I learned this. Somebody told me this. And what you do is you get a bunch of Ana bots, and you set it to hard mode, and you set it to headshots only because Ana can't headshot. And then you can just go around in a server and, like, practice your headshots. Like, oh, I want to be better at McCree or whatever, right? So that was something that you could already do without having other players in these really big custom matches with all of these different variables. Now that you have those variables, I think even though we said it can be a palate cleanser and you just had this crazy Zenyatta's wonderful adventure, I think there's also serious applications for it too for people who want to use it to test certain things or get better with certain characters. So what I'm hearing from you guys is that Blizzard should make an Overwatch MMO. Mm-hmm. Sure. I think that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, sure, although I... I think that Overwatch was born of Blizzard trying to make an Overwatch MMO and it didn't work. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what Titan was going to be. 
the Overwatch was born of Titan failing. Sounds like the beginning of an epic poem. Yeah, I think Blizzard should write an epic poem. Anyway, <laughs> I think we have one more discussion topic. You two said that you wanted to talk about fancy oh new Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Here she goes. Oh my god. Guys, guys, I got a gaming PC. Did you name it? I didn't name it. It's beautiful. It has this like very cool kind of blue LED light coming out of the fan, which I didn't think I would be into because whenever I would walk by gaming PCs like that in Best Buy, I'd be like, fuck those people who buy those PCs. I have one now. I love it. I love it. <laughs> How has that changed the way that you play Overwatch, Cecilia Donastasio? Oh, my God. It's gotten okay. better. Well... Let me let me give you some stats. All right, let me give you some stats. Sure. This has got, <laughs> so this has got a 1070 graphics card. Before this, I was playing on my laptop, which was an i7, and it was like a great laptop. But every time I would play Overwatch, like I would have to put a cooling pad under the laptop, a little fan into my laptop fan kind of blowing in there. And if that didn't work, I'd have to lean that fan against some dictionaries to get a good angle or put a floor fan next to the whole thing to blow into the little fan to blow into my laptop, right? So in case you're wondering, like, why I love Overwatch so much, it might just be because for several months I could only play, like, three or four games at a time, have to, like, sit down, read a little bit, and then play again, you know? Now, like, oh, man, I'm so much better now. Like, my hook percentage is up, like, 6% when I'm playing Roadhog, like, my reaction times are so much faster. Like I'm, I'm encouraged to play a lot more comp, which is really fun. And more than that, I'm encouraged to kind of speak up more in competitive matches um, because of this confidence I have that my equipment is kind of like behind my gameplay, you know? For me, it's made a lot of difference. So I have, I have um, people who work, I know people who work at Intel. Um, I have a family member who works there, so I got or Dell, or whatever, I can't think right now. Um, so I got an Alienware a uh, Area 51, and this has uh, dual 1070s, and it's just glorious, because before I was playing on a gaming laptop that I had from when I was in college, which is eons and eons ago, because I am super, super old. And so every now and then, I would get a lot of stutter when there was, like, particle effects, and now that I don't have that, I can actually, like, when there are big battles on the point, I can finally push through that mm -hmm. and do a lot better. Um, my my Twitch reflexes feel nicer and faster because I don't have to deal with a lot of tech bullshit. So even though Overwatch is already a game that's pretty tightly optimized in terms of what you, like what you can run it on, like you can run it on some pretty low end systems. Um, so, so, I, it's just so good. It's so good. It's I, I don't so have the good. words for it. I stumbled it's over my so words. Good. Cecilia and I are, are both in love and jumping into this Overwatch experience with these new computers. It's so good. Yeah. I have to say, it just makes so much of a difference in how I approach this game. I got inspired to buy a gaming PC because when I visit my parents, I actually go to a LAN cafe, like an old school LAN cafe, and they have these incredible gaming PCs there, and... Um, that was one of the first time. That was the first time I actually played Overwatch on PC. I had it on Xbox before, and the experience—it's like operating a spaceship. <laughs> it's just hard to. It's so hard to explain. <laughs> but like, when you're really like keyed in like that to the game, and you feel like it's so responsive, like it feels like an extension of you, and it kind of—and I hate this word because I think it's so gimmicky, but it really adds a level of immersion. It really does. Yeah, the, the experience you just described is actually piloting an Ava from Evangelion. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I bought this computer and it contained the soul of my mother. That's Spoiler! what that's what that's, that's what made it so funny. It's a show from like nineteen ninety two. Heather. I don't care. <laughs> Get in the robot, Shinji. Play the goddamn objective, Shinji. And on that note, we are ending this episode. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for listening and get in the robot, Shinji. Bye, guys. Bye.